welcome to section 3.6 and 3.7. Now in 3.6 we'll talk about the genetic code, which is just really this code that links nucleotides, the stuff that DNA and RNA are made of, to proteins, which will be composed of amino acids. So when we talk about the code, you'll see it really refers typically to this chart, which will so show us how we kind of view segments of nucleotides, that's what like the UCU represents, and what corresponding amino acid that will uh, cause to be placed there. And so that's why it's called translation. So this is tied to section 3.7, which is when we talk about how we take RNA and convert it to make proteins. So we're going to group these together because we use this genetic code, which is universal, so everybody uses this code, all life. So we're going to talk about how they use this code to go through the process of translation and this ends up finally making us produce these proteins and to do so reliably. Because thanks to this code, so long as you have the code, you can keep churning out the same proteins over and over reliably no matter what organism you're even part of. So this is a very useful, reliable system to allow us to make proteins. Now when we're doing this genetic code, you first have to realize that we're going to do so using codons, and that's going to be groups of three nucleotides. So when we're talking about this, looking at mRNA, or you could look at DNA if you want, uh, but typically mRNA, you're going to see that we're going to have something like GUG. Those are the three nucleotides. They comprise one codon, and that codon then will code for a particular amino acid. In this case, I believe it's valine. Uh, you're not going to have to memorize them, uh, but you'll see there's this ratio of three nucleotides to one amino acid. And this works out very well because there's about 20 amino acids and if you view DNA or mRNA in these triplets, these codons, there's actually 64 possible ones. So this works out nicely that we have plenty of codons, plenty of these triplets to comprise the 20 amino acids that we need to. And so this is just showing us DNA made the RNA, that's transcription, and now the codons in the mRNA will be used to reliably help us build this protein. That's how we went from nucleotides here up top to going to amino acids here on the bottom. Now this chart is just going to show us another way of doing it. So this one you'll see will be the first base, the first nucleotide. Then you'll do the second is the second row, and then the third one will be the last. So if I'm trying to read AUG, what I can do is say, okay, here's A, then I go down to U, then I go over to G, and I'll see that that's going to code for met, methionine. It's also a start codon, and so that makes sense because it's the beginning. So this one would be currently coding for met or methionine. Then we have CCC, so I just go C, C, C. That's going to code for proline, so I'll put pro, and then we can do the same thing, UCG. So we've got UCG, that's going to be serine, S-E-R. Then we've got GAU, G-A-U, that's, uh, I think it's like aspirin or something, I don't know, ASP, that's good enough. UUC, uh, UUC, -U I think that's phenylalanine, P-H-E, and then lastly we have UGA, I know I don't really have room to write another one, but that's okay, because UGA is a stop codon, so it just says you're done. So this would be the polypeptide. Uh, Remember, polypeptide is essentially a protein. It's a bunch of amino acids together. Uh, it's just sometimes more than one polypeptide gets together to form a final protein, but they're just about the same. So this would be the polypeptide that we just made from this sequence. These would be the amino acids that are part of that. And so all we had to do was use the genetic code, use this system, to go through and translate it. And this is what we're left with. The other piece I want to discuss with you is this is what's called a redundant code. And what that means is when we look at something like proline, you'll notice that there's four different codons that code for proline. There's CCU, CCC, CCA, CCG. And so this is kind of useful because in general, not always, but in general, if you start something out with like CC, it doesn't really matter what that third guy is too much. You're probably going to get the same one regardless. So this is very useful for us where even if you have mutations, if they occur in the third guy, that last guy in a codon, it, in many cases at least, if not most, won't actually change anything overall. You know, you still get the same amino acid, so you still build the same protein. So kind of one of those no harm, no foul type things. Uh, so it's a useful thing about our code. And they just call that, and you might see them refer to this genetic code as being redundant. They'll also say it's universal. We've talked about everybody uses this. 
but it's universal and it's redundant, and that helps protect us from mutations. Now, as we switch to translation, you got to remember that we've already done the first part of the central dogma, which was DNA to RNA transcription. So we're now doing the second part where the RNA gets converted to protein, and that'll be translation. Now this is going to occur in the cytoplasm. So this is one of the reasons we needed to do transcription so that this RNA can go from the nucleus, which is where this process starts, and it can go out into the cytoplasm for where it's the process of making a protein is going to finish. Now, so oh, well, here, let's go through. So where? Cytoplasm. Pretty easy. This can occur along the rough ER, if you remember. It can occur in ribosomes floating freely. Uh, but really, this is going to occur in the cytoplasm somewhere, and it's going to be occurring at the site of a ribosome. That's the guy who's going to be in charge of this. So who? All the types of RNA. You're going to have mRNA that's going to be the code. You have tRNA we've talked about before is going to be the one that actually converts codons to amino acids because the tRNA will have anticodons, the complement to an mRNA codon, which will attach, and it will bring an amino acid. So each codon will attract a specific tRNA, its opposite tRNA, if you will, that'll then drop off a particular specific amino acid for that codon. So these are the guys that do most of the work, I would say. And then the overseers are the ribosomes, which are made of, if you remember, RNA. They're RNA and some proteins. And so all the types of RNA will be critical, or at least the three big types we talk about, in making translation happen. So it's not just RNA in general, it's mRNA, tRNA, rRNA working together allow us to build proteins. And that's pretty much the why, is that proteins, we've said before, pretty much run our body and make us who we are. And so this is going to be the last part of this process of protein synthesis. That's the reason that we're doing this, is we want to go through and produce these proteins so we can live. It's kind of an important thing. So anticodons, just to elaborate here, uh, we've talked about that mRNA has these codons, so that's where we're going to see the codons. So let's say the codon is UUU. What you're going to see then is the tRNA will have the complement, so it will have the anticodon, and the anticodon or complement to UUU would be AAA. And so that will kind of form these weak hydrogen bonds with each other temporarily, and that will, by bonding there, allow us to take the amino acid that's on the tRNA, it's containing the amino acids, so we can take those amino acids and string them together. And so as tRNAs keep coming and coming and coming, what's going to happen is we're going to keep stringing together the amino acids that they bring into a chain, which will then give us our polypeptide, which we can make into a protein. And so this is a vital step, the fact that tRNA has these anticodons, and we can use that to reliably get to where we need to be. Now, after translation has gone through and had tRNAs bind codon by codon by codon through that mRNA, the ribosome exposes one codon at a time to make sure it's in order, but it literally just goes through reading it one by one by one until all the codons have been read. You know, we start with the start codon, we end with the stop codon. So once we reach that stop codon, this chain of amino acids that we've built essentially breaks away, falls off. And so now we just have this long chain of amino acids. Now this, to become a final product, has to go through some post-translational stuff which namely means protein folding. If you remember, we talked about that there is multiple structures. There's primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure. And a lot of that's just involving these hydrogen bonds and the way that it folds and kind of sticks to itself. So that protein folding still has to occur. And remember, too, that a lot of these polypeptides or proteins get sent to the Golgi if they're going to be sent elsewhere in the cell, and they're oftentimes modified where they might add stuff to them, like carbohydrates, so that they're ready to go and do their job or be recognized. And so just because we built something doesn't mean it's done. We're done with translation, sure, but it doesn't mean that we're done and that protein is ready to go. Most things after they finish translation do have to still go through some final modifications before they're a finished functional protein product. Uh, other than that, that's it for this section. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys soon.